What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about defensive lineman Jay Sean Cornell, the forgotten lion. I think we did one of these last year, but I'm not sure who we did on. But today it's about Jay Sean Cornell. So let's get it started. No, so I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. And welcome everybody to the video. Glad you guys are here. Now I got to give a shout out to my man Kobe for actually bringing this to my attention yesterday. He sent me this picture, uh, pretty much grades for Jay Sean Cornell when he came out of the draft. I think it's something that I did see when he did come out of the draft, but it did bring to my attention that yeah, I probably should do a video on this guy because he is kind of forgotten. He is kind of overlooked. As we get closer to the draft now, we start looking ahead towards prospects. We sometimes forget who's actually on our team and especially Jay Sean Cornell, a guy that was injured all of last season, did not play, was placed on IR after basically a non-contact Achilles injury, which is very scary. So he didn't play at all last season. And it's kind of easy to forget about players like that. He was also a seventh round pick and when we drafted him, not a lot of people really know who this guy was. But those PFF grades, you know, made a lot of people interested. But unfortunately, he just didn't miss. He missed his entire rookie season. So now that we're heading into 2021, we're looking towards a draft. It can be easy to overlook some of the players that are actually still in the roster. And I think one of those guys are Jay Sean Cornell. So shout out to Kobe for bringing this to my attention that I should do a video like this. So before we get into what I think he brings to the table on film, which I think is different from a lot of our other defensive linemen, let's first just run through the numbers. At 6'3", 285 pounds, he came out of high school as one of the top recruits in the nation. He was ranked as the number one recruit out of Minnesota, but as a top 100 recruit nationally. I think around like 33 is where most people had Jay Sean Cornell. So he was a top recruit. Went to Ohio State, we know for really recently they've had one of the best teams in in the country and defensively they've been very strong and also on the defensive line they put out some top tier talent recently with Nick Bosa, Chase Young, uh, Joey Bosa. They put out some really good players. Fortunately for Jason Cornell it was a very slow start with Ohio State. In 2015 his first year with Ohio State he redshirted as a freshman then 2016 came around didn't find much playing time. 2017 again didn't find tons of playing time but they found ways to just try to get him rotated in and out but it was a strong defensive line. Then 2018 rolled around Ohio State lost a pretty good amount of players to the draft, specifically defensive ends. So they needed some help there. So what did they do? Well, they pushed in the defensive end. Now, Jay Sean Cornell talked about this later, and he said that he's a team player. So this is why he did. He's a team player, and he's going to do whatever the team needs. And for Cornell, it was an opportunity, but unfortunately for him, his stat line just didn't reflect much good there. In nine games played, he only had two tackles for loss, one sack, and 15 total tackles in 2018. But then 2019 comes around. His final year as an Ohio State Buckeye. And right now, it's looking like, oh gosh, you know, what's going to happen? What, what's the future for Jay Sean Cornell? Does he have an NFL future? But 2019 is by far his best season. He goes out and still a rotational defensive lineman, plays extremely well in his final season. In his final season, he totaled 30 total tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, and four sacks on the season. So that's a really strong year for Jay Sean Cornell. Now, there was still some uncertainty as he was not invited to the NFL Draft Combine. But PFF then put out these grades of Jay Sean Cornell and made a lot of people like, oh, Oh, okay, maybe I should go check this guy out. Here's what BFF gave him. In 2019, his final year, they gave him an 87.1 pass rush grade, which was one of the best in the country. And they gave him a 90.2 overall defensive tackle grade, which was the fourth best in the country of that draft. Behind Derek Brown, who was potentially could have been the Lions' first pick in the draft, Garrett Marino, Jordan Elliott, who was a Cleveland Brown pick. So he was up there by PFF as one of the top graded defensive tackles in that draft class. So that brought some attention to some fans. And maybe we started to check him out a little bit, but like I said, he went down with an Achilles injury, basically a non-contact injury, which is scary, and he missed the entire season. Now 2020 comes around, and you ask yourself, okay, what could his role be with the Detroit Lions? Well, you first got to ask yourself, what is the Lions defense going to look like next season? Now, we're not 100% sure what the Lions defense will look like next season. Could it be, you know, more four defensive line sets? Is it still going to be three? Is it going to be one gap, two gap? We don't really, really know exactly what it's going to be next season, but I do think his skill set brings the Lions something a little bit different from what they currently have with their defensive linemen. I actually thought he'd bring this last season, but unfortunately, because of the injury, we didn't get to see it at all. So... Let's talk about Jay Sean Cornell a little bit. Tough to make an NFL team as a seventh round pick, uh, but there has been some really good late round picks, undrafted players, especially at the defensive line possession, especially defensive tackles. Uh, for some reason, you can really hit on some gems there late in the draft, and especially a guy like Cornell that really, because of his production, uh, rotational player, uh, really just being very limited at Ohio State until really a senior season, it can really hurt him. It really hurt him, and it made him kind of drop down the boards. But Jay Sean Cornell does not lack confidence. When he was asked, what does he think he brings to the table? He said, I bring one of the top pass rushers in the nation but I also can stop the run and be helpful there I'm a leader really good off the field he has two degrees right now and uh, he's a he's a player that your team can build around so clearly a lot of confidence for Cornell with that answer but now let's dive into the film so 
at his size, he was a little bit undersized to be basically a nose tackle for the Detroit Lions with Matt Patricia's scheme. So it looked like he was going to be a 3-4, like, you know, defensive end. So a little bit bigger out there. He had to be a little bit bigger in that scheme. So that's kind of what it looked like his role would be. But now, if we're looking at potentially a 4-3, 3-4, whatever, we could be looking at maybe more closer to his role. Now, with Ohio State, mainly a 3-5 to five technique, but he would mix in at times at the 9 technique spot, which is mainly, you know, that 2018 season when they pushed him to defensive end. But clearly, that was not his most productive. I really like on the inside because I think what he brings his biggest strength is quickness and athleticism which is really tough for some of those interior offensive linemen to keep up with and that's really where he has an advantage so let's dive into what I saw on the tape now I think one thing that you'll notice when you watch him is he does do a lot to create plays for others he does a lot to open up things for others and he also touched on this saying that as a defensive line as a unit they were a unit that knew what everybody else was doing and they worked together as a team to get to the quarterback and you can see from a lot of the uh, Chase Young clips if you go watch some of his highlights really just Ohio State's defensive in general, a lot of times he was a player that could open up other guys, give him a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Very similar in a way to Michael Brockers, who the Lions traded for. A guy that gave opportunities to Aaron Donald. Was he the reason Aaron Donald's a beast? No, he's still a beast. Was Jason Cornell the reason that Chase Young's a beast? No, Chase Young's just a beast. But he did do a lot to help open him up. Taking on double teams, being basically the stunt man, the guy that would crash outside so the outside defensive end could crash inside. That's what he was able to do with Ohio State. It really helped out Chase Young, but he would take on a lot of double teams and it really got a lot of one-on-ones elsewhere. And of course, when you leave Chase Young one-on-one, you're going to have some issues as an offense. So he was very beneficial there. And that kind of thing can go very, very unnoticed. But you'll see a lot of clips of him taking on those double teams and also being used on stunts. But when he got one-on-ones opportunities, he was actually pretty impactful. As I mentioned, I think one of his biggest strengths is athleticism, his quickness for his size. At 285, he's not a small man. Not, not small at all. But he does have a really nice get off off the line of scrimmage. And he's very athletic, but he's got some nice speed moves. Nice, nice speed pass rushing moves. And I thought it was interesting when he was asked what is his go-to pass first moves and I thought from watching on film it was you know the swim move is one that he went to a lot and he said personally it was it's the side scissor move but also the swim move those are kind of his two go-to's as a pass rusher I thought that was an interesting answer because I kind of went back and looked to just see what some of the other top pass rushers have said and Nick Bosa said that his go-to is also the side scissor pass rush move so clearly Larry Johnson who was their defensive line coach uh, was probably teaching them a lot of similar things there but also I think it fits the type of player that he is an athletic player that can win by speed because he's on the inside if he was on the outside you'd have to look at other things maybe more bull rush type of moves but for him because I think defensive tackle was so beneficial for him because he would be able to outmatch the most interior offensive linemen with pure athleticism and quickness off the snap. And that's why the swim move, the side scissor, things like that side scissor, basically, you know, swiping down and then really dipping underneath. And of course, the swim move, everybody knows about that move. But being able to use that athleticism to get back to the quarterback win very quickly. And he was the type of player that could do that. He could be a disruptor as a pass rusher. And I think that's his biggest strength. And I think that's a lot different from what a lot of our defense linemen have. I mean, look at our defense line right now. In terms of interior defense lineman. I love Flowers. I love Romeo. Good there. But inside, inside that, let's just say hypothetically you're in a 4-3, so you got the four defense lineman. Inside that, you have Michael Brockers. Not a bad pass rusher. Can give you something there. But did a lot of opening up other guys, but he's also tremendous as a run stopper. That's kind of where his, you know, he's known for. Penasini was a nose tackle, more of a run stopper there. Kevin Strong did some nice things for the Lions as a run stopper as well. Nick Williams was brought back on a cheaper contract. You have a guy like Deshaun Hand who started off early in his career showing some pass rush glimpses, but really been more of a run defender since then. And then you have Jason Cornell, who can give you more of that interior pass rush. Okay, and when you look at the Lions this offseason, before we got Brockers, we were thinking, man, it'd be nice to have a defensive tackle that could get to the quarterback. Brockers gives you some of that. But Jay Sean Cornell is very overlooked as a guy that can also bring that to the table. I thought this play was extremely impressive. You're going to see him at defensive tackle here. He's going to run out a stunt. And watch him just split these two guys. That won't show up on your normal stat sheet, but that's a huge impact. Him on one-on-one -on -one opportunities, he did a really nice job of winning quickly when he wasn't double teamed. But he also could take on those double teams to open up other pass rushers. That's what his role could be with the Detroit Lions next season. And he could be opening up guys like Julian Okwara, uh, Austin Bryant, Romeo Okwara, Trey Flowers, kind of like Michael Brockers could do as well with Aaron Donald. And then you talk about the weaknesses. See, I think his weaknesses, I think he can stop the run. I don't think he's a bad run defender, but I think he's too easily, easily pushed out of the play. He too easily is going with the flow. If it's his own blocking scheme, just kind of going towards where the offensive line wants to take him. He's at, his athleticism allows him to stay in the play. He fights to get back into the play. He's always pursuing. But 
I do think that he's too often taken out of the play as a run defender. He's still not extremely dominant as a run clogger, even though he can stop the run. If he couldn't stop the run, his pa his total grade wasn't be wouldn't be that high because pass rushing is 87 and his total grade is a 90. His run gate grade also has to be really good. I think it's good run defender. He was really nice in college, but he's just not as dominant as you'd like to see. But I think there's a clear you know ability here for him to disengage because he doesn't win with power as much. You will see some bull rush mixed in as a pass rusher, but it's usually with speed, which I think is that's that's kind of why he's not as dominant as a run defender as you would like. But he does disengage. But he's not pushing run plays back consistently. And clearly, when he was asked what his biggest strength is, he said pass rusher first, and he said, I can stop the run. I think he's okay at stopping the run. He's not bad at it. And like I said, when you take on those double teams, it's great. But it's his biggest strength to me is getting after the quarterback. And that's what the Lions could use in the interior. You also notice he does a great job of getting leverage, but taking on half of his man. He takes on half of his man, and then he's able to use that ex explosiveness and athleticism to get to the quarterback. Also, he does have a variety of pass rush moves with also counter pass rush moves. You'll see him try to go right to that swim and kind of work off it, but he does have counter pass rush moves in his arsenal. You could tell he's very, very diverse as a pass rusher, and I think a lot of that has to do with being at Ohio State for five years and getting to learn. And you could just see the progression year after year and him improving and just adding more and more to, as a pass rusher uh, to his game and to his plate. And finally in 2019, it's kind of showed out a little bit. You see him overrun some plays at times. He, he would like to see him be a little more disciplined and stay home because sometimes he does uh, shoot down and you know if it's a read option, things like that, he could be completely out of place. Or he'll get to the backfield as a pass rusher or run defender and just completely run by them with a little bit when he's got an opportunity because he wins so quickly. Uh, so really, I mean, at that size, it can be probably tough to stop your momentum once you're going downhill. 4-3-1 gapping defense because I'm telling you, I think he'd be honestly probably a better fit than he was for the last scheme because I think for the last one, yeah, he could work because he could play DTD and he had some solid size there for a 3 4 defense fan. But you get him in the inside where he's using explosiveness just like he did at Ohio State. I think that's where he's going to be most impactful. This is, a, this is a good defensive lineman. Just took him forever to really show out and also being a rotational player, you know, kept him from being that notice. Those are grades that you work for, right? He put that on the film and you can see it every game. He sure he serves some type of an impact for the most part. He also has a little bit of bull rush in his arsenal. I just think he's a really nice pass rusher. I really do. I mean, there's a lot of occasions. Just watch this film from 2019. So many occasions where he gets one-on-one -on -one opportunities, he's making a play. One game I didn't see him as impactful was against Michigan, but Michigan had some really good interior offensive linemen, including Michael Onwinu and Ruiz. So they had some nice interior offensive linemen that could really slow you down and halt you one-on-one. -on -one. But aside from that, you know, you get him one-on-one opportunities, he's tough. And like I said, he's really willing to just go make a play to open up other guys. And that's what the Lions could really use right now is guys that can help in stunts and open up other players, especially because it's going to be more attacking defense next year with Capers. And that's what I think he can help bring to the table. So I do like the fact that Sean Cornell is coming back for 2021 and the fact that he may be just a little bit overlooked, but you can't forget about the impact this guy could serve next season. Trust me, if you don't believe me, go watch this film. I'll throw in some clips, but if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, check out 2019 and let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of him as a pass rusher because I'm telling you, this guy, this guy can be a pass rusher and it seems clear that his best play could be ahead of him as long as he's able to come back and be healthy because he did improve year to year, but his final year was really his breakout season. He doesn't have any issues off this off this field. And like I said, he's got two degrees, so that's impressive as well. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'm out.